Acts of the Apostles Ancient Greek, Praxis ton Apostolon Praxis ton Apostolon, Latin, Actus Apostolorum, often referred to simply as Acts, or formally the Book of Acts, is the fifth book of the New Testament. It tells of the founding of the Christian Church and the spread of its message to the Roman Empire. Acts and the Gospel of Luke make up a two-part work, Luke Acts, by the same anonymous author, usually dated to around 80-90 AD. The first part, the Gospel of Luke, tells how God fulfilled his plan for the world's salvation through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, the promised Messiah. Acts continues the story of Christianity in the first century, beginning with Jesus's ascension to heaven. The early chapters, set in Jerusalem, describe the day of Pentecost the coming of the Holy Spirit and the growth of the Church in Jerusalem. Initially, the Jews are receptive to the Christian message, but soon they turn against the followers of Jesus. Rejected by the Jews, under the guidance of the Apostle Peter the message is taken to the Gentiles. The later chapters tell of Paul's conversion, his mission in Asia Minor and the Aegean, and finally his imprisonment in Rome, where, as the book ends, he awaits trial. Luke acts as an attempt to answer a theological problem, namely how the Messiah of the Jews came to have an overwhelmingly non-Jewish church, the answer it provides, and its central theme, is that the message of Christ was sent to the Gentiles because the Jews rejected it. Luke Acts can be also seen as a defense of, or, apology, for, the Jesus movement addressed to the Jews. The bulk of the speeches and sermons in Acts are addressed to Jewish audiences, with the Romans serving as external arbiters on disputes concerning Jewish customs and law. On the one hand, Luke portrays the Christians as a sect of the Jews, and therefore entitled to legal protection as a recognized religion. On the other, Luke seems unclear as to the future God intends for Jews and Christians, celebrating the Jewishness of Jesus and his immediate followers while also stressing how the Jews had rejected God's promised Messiah. Topic. Composition and setting <laughs> Topic. Title, Unity of Luke Acts, Authorship and Date The title, Acts of the Apostles Greek praxis apostolon praxis apostolon was first used by Irenaeus in the late 2nd century. It is not known whether this was an existing title or one invented by Irenaeus. It does seem clear, however, that it was not given by the author. The Gospel of Luke and Acts make up a two volume work which scholars call Luke Acts. Together they account for 27.5% of the New Testament, the largest contribution attributed to a single author, providing the framework for both the Church's liturgical calendar and the historical outline into which later generations have fitted their idea of the story of Jesus and the early Church. The author is not named in either volume. According to Church tradition dating from the 2nd century, he was the Luke. Named as a companion of the Apostle Paul in three of the letters attributed to Paul himself, this view is still sometimes advanced, but a critical consensus emphasizes the countless contradictions between the account in Acts and the authentic Pauline letters. An example can be seen by comparing Acts's accounts of Paul's conversion, Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 31, 22 to 6 minus 21, and 26 to 9 minus 23, with Paul's own statement that he remained unknown to Christians in Judea after that event, Galatians chapter 1 verses 17 to 24. The author is an admirer of Paul, but does not share Paul's own view of himself as an apostle. His own theology is considerably different from Paul's on key points and does not represent Paul's own views accurately. 
He was educated, a man of means, probably urban, and someone who respected manual work, although not a worker himself. This is significant, because more highbrow writers of the time looked down on the artisans and small business people who made up the early Church of Paul and were presumably Luke's audience. While no proposed date for the composition of Acts is universally accepted, the most common scholarly position is to date Luke Acts to 80 to 90 AD, on the grounds that it uses Mark as a source, looks back on the destruction of Jerusalem, and does not show any awareness of the letters of Paul which began circulating late in the first century. The earliest possible date for the composition of Acts is set by the events with which it ends, Paul's imprisonment in Rome c. 63 AD, but such an early dating is a minority position. The last possible date would be set by its first definite citation by another author, but there is no unanimity on this. Some scholars find echoes of Acts in a work from c. 95 AD called 1 Clement, while others see no indisputable citation until the middle of the 2nd century. A minority of scholars, necessarily in the latter camp, conclude that Acts dates to the 2nd century, believing that it shows awareness of the letters of Paul, the works of Josephus, or the writings of Marcion. Manuscripts <inaudible> 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 There are two major textual variants of Acts, the Western text type and the Alexandrian. The oldest complete Alexandrian manuscripts date from the 4th century and the oldest Western ones from the 6th, with fragments and citations going back to the 3rd. Western texts of Acts are 6.2 to 8.4 percent longer than Alexandrian texts, the additions tending to enhance the Jewish rejection of the Messiah and the role of the Holy Spirit, in ways that are stylistically different from the rest of Acts. The majority of scholars prefer the Alexandrian shorter text type over the Western as the more authentic, but this same argument would favor the Western over the Alexandrian for the Gospel of Luke, as in that case the Western version is the shorter, the debate therefore continues. <laughs> <laughs> Genre, sources and historicity of Acts The title, Acts of the Apostles, Praxis Apostolon, would seem to identify it with the genre telling of the deeds and achievements of great men, Praxis, but it was not the title given by the author. The anonymous author aligned Luke Acts to the narratives, Diegesis Diegesis, which many others had written, and described his own work as an orderly account, Acrobos Cathexes. Thus while Acts is widely thought of as a history, it lacks exact analogies in Hellenistic or Jewish literature. The author of Acts may have taken as his model the works of Dionysus of Halicarnassus, who wrote a well-known history of Rome, or the Jewish historian Josephus, author of A History of the Jews. Like them, he anchors his history by dating the birth of the founder Romulus for Dionysus, Moses for Josephus, Jesus for Luke and like them he tells how the founder is born from God, taught authoritatively, and appeared to witnesses after death before ascending to heaven. By and large the sources for Acts can only be guessed at, but the author would have had access to the Septuagint a Greek translation of the Jewish scriptures, the Gospel of Mark, and either the hypothetical collection of sayings of Jesus, called the Q source or the Gospel of Matthew. He transposed a few incidents from Mark's Gospel to the time of the Apostles, for example, the material about clean and unclean. Foods in Mark 7 is used in Acts 10, and Mark's account of the accusation that Jesus has attacked the temple Mark chapter 14 verse 58 is used in a story about Stephen Acts chapter 6 verse 14. There are also points of contacts meaning suggestive parallels but something less than clear evidence with 1 Peter, the letter to the Hebrews, and 1 Clement. Other sources can only be inferred from internal evidence—the traditional explanation of the three 
we passages, for example, is that they represent eyewitness accounts. The search for such inferred sources was popular in the 19th century, but by the mid 20th it had largely been abandoned. Acts was read as a reliable history of the early church well into the post Reformation era. By the 17th century, however, biblical scholars began to notice that it was incomplete and tendentious. Its picture of a harmonious church is quite at odds with that given by Paul's letters, and it omits important events such as the deaths of both Peter and Paul. The mid-19th century scholar Ferdinand Bauer suggested that the author of Acts had rewritten history to present a united Peter and Paul and advance a single orthodoxy against the Marcionites. Marcion was a second-century heretic who wished to cut Christianity off entirely from the Jews. Bauer continues to have enormous influence, but today there is less interest in determining the author of Acts' historical accuracy although this has never died out than in understanding his theological program. <laughs> <laughs> Audience and authorial intent Luke was written to be read aloud to a group of Jesus followers gathered in a house to share the Lord's Supper. The author assumes an educated Greek-speaking audience, but directs his attention to specifically Christian concerns rather than to the Greco-Roman world at large. He begins his gospel with a preface addressed to Theophilus, informing him of his intention to provide an ordered account of events which will lead his reader to certainty. He did not write in order to provide Theophilus with historical justification. Did it happen? But to encourage faith. What happened, and what does it all mean? Acts or Luke Acts is intended as a work of edification. Edification means the empirical demonstration that virtue is superior to vice, but is not all of Luke's purpose. He also engages with the question of a Christian's proper relationship with the Roman Empire, the civil power of the day, could a Christian obey God and also Caesar? The answer is ambiguous. The Romans never move against Jesus or his followers unless provoked by the Jews. In the trial scenes the Christian missionaries are always cleared of charges of violating Roman laws, and Acts ends with Paul in Rome proclaiming the Christian message under Roman protection. At the same time, Luke makes clear that the Romans, like all earthly rulers, receive their authority from Satan, while Christ is ruler of the kingdom of God. Topic. Structure and content Topic. Structure Acts has two key structural principles. The first is the geographic movement from Jerusalem, center of God's covenantal people, the Jews, to Rome, center of the Gentile world. This structure reaches back to the author's preceding work, the Gospel of Luke, and is signaled by parallel scenes such as Paul's utterance in Acts chapter 19 verse 21, which echoes Jesus's words in Luke chapter 9 verse 51, Paul has Rome as his destination, as Jesus had Jerusalem. The second key element is the roles of Peter and Paul, the first representing the Jewish Christian Church, the second the mission to the Gentiles. Transition, reprise of the preface addressed to Theophilus and the closing events of the Gospel Acts 1 Petrine Christianity, the Jewish Church from Jerusalem to Antioch Acts chapter 2 verse 1 minus 12 to 25, 2 to 1 minus 8 to 1 beginnings in Jerusalem 8 to 2 minus 40 the Church expands to Samaria and beyond 9 to 1 minus 31 conversion of Paul 
932–1225 the conversion of Cornelius, and the formation of the Antioch Church Pauline Christianity, the Gentile mission from Antioch to Rome Acts chapter 13 verse 1-28-21, 13-1-14-21 the Gentile mission is promoted from Antioch 15 to 1 minus 35 the Gentile mission is confirmed in Jerusalem 1536 minus 28 to 31 the Gentile mission climaxing in Paul's passion story in Rome 2117 minus 28 to 31 topic outline Dedication to Theophilus 1 to 1 minus 2 Resurrection appearances 1 to 3 Great Commission 1 to 4 minus 8 Ascension 1 to 9 Second Coming Prophecy 1 10 minus 11 Matthias replaced Judas 1 12 minus 26 The Upper Room 1 13 the Holy Spirit came at Shavuot, Pentecost, 2-1-47, see also Paraclete. Peter healed a crippled beggar, 3-1-10. Peter's speech at the temple, 3-11-26. Peter and John before the Sanhedrin, 4-1-22. Resurrection of the dead, 4-2. Believer's Prayer 423-31 Everything is shared 432-37 Ananias and Sapphira 521-11 Signs and Wonders 512-16 Apostles before the Sanhedrin 517-42 Seven deacons appointed 6-1-7 Stephen before the Sanhedrin 6 to 8 minus 7 to 60 The Cave of the Patriarchs was located in Shechem 716 Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians 722 First mentioning of Saul Paul the apostle in the Bible 758 Paul the Apostle confesses his part in the martyrdom of Stephen 758-60. Saul persecuted the Church of Jerusalem 821-3. Philip the Evangelist 8-4-40. Simon Magus 8-9-24. Ethiopian Eunuch 826-39. Conversion of Paul the Apostle 9 22-9-22, 26-9-24 -9 Paul the Apostle confesses his active part in the martyrdom of Stephen 2220. Peter healed Aeneas and raised Tabitha from the dead 932-43 Conversion of Cornelius, 10 to 1 minus 8, 24 to 48. Peter's vision of a sheet with animals, 10 to 9 minus 23, 11 to 1 minus 18. Church of Antioch founded, 1119 minus 30. Term Christian, first used, 1126. James the Great executed, 12 to 1 minus 2. Peter's rescue from prison, 12 to 3 minus 19. Death of Herod Agrippa I in 44, 12 20 minus 25. The voice of a god, 12 22. Mission of Barnabas and Saul, 13 to 14. Saul, who was also known as Paul, 13 to 9. Called gods. In human form. 1411. Council of Jerusalem. 15 to 1 minus 35. Paul separated from Barnabas. 1536 minus 41. Second and third missions. 16 to 20. Areopagus sermon. 1716 minus 34.
God dot has set a day 1730-31 trial before Gallio C 51 to 52 1812-17 trip to Jerusalem 21 before the people and the Sanhedrin 22 to 23 before Felix Festus Herod Agrippa 2 24 to 26 trip to Rome 27 to 28 called a god on Malta 28 to 6 topic content The Gospel of Luke began with a prologue addressed to Theophilus, Acts likewise opens with an address to Theophilus and refers to my earlier book, almost certainly the Gospel. The apostles and other followers of Jesus meet and elect Matthias to replace Judas as a member of the Twelve. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descends and confers God's power on them, and Peter, along with John, preaches to many in Jerusalem, and performs Christ-like healings, casting out of evil spirits, and raising of the dead. The first believers share all property in common, aid in each other's homes, and worship together. At first many Jews follow Christ and are baptized, but the Christians begin to be increasingly persecuted by the Jews. Stephen is arrested for blasphemy, and after a trial, is found guilty and stoned by the Jews. Stephen's death marks a major turning point, the Jews have rejected the message, and henceforth it will be taken to the Gentiles, the message is taken to the Samaritans, a people rejected by Jews, and to the Gentiles. Saul of Tarsus, one of the Jews who persecuted the Christians, is converted by a vision to become a follower of Christ an event which Luke regards as so important that he relates it three times. Peter, directed by a series of visions, preaches to Cornelius the centurion, a Gentile God-fearer, who becomes a follower of Christ. The Holy Spirit descends on Peter and Cornelius, thus confirming that the message of eternal life in Christ is for all mankind. The Gentile Church is established in Antioch, northwestern Syria, the third largest city of the empire, and here Christ's followers are first called Christians. The mission to the Gentiles is promoted from Antioch and confirmed at meeting in Jerusalem between Paul and the leadership of the Jerusalem Church. Paul spends the next few years traveling through Western Asia Minor and the Aegean, preaching, converting Gentiles, and founding new churches. On a visit to Jerusalem he is set on by a Jewish mob. Saved by the Roman commander, he is accused by the Jews of being a revolutionary, the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, and imprisoned. Paul asserts his right as a Roman citizen, to be tried in Rome and is sent by sea to Rome, where he spends another two years under house arrest, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts ends abruptly without recording the outcome of Paul's legal troubles. Theology Prior to the 1950s, Luke Acts was seen as a historical work, written to defend Christianity before the Romans or Paul against his detractors. Since then, however, the tendency has been to see the work as primarily theological. Luke's theology is expressed primarily through his overarching plot, the way scenes, themes and characters combine to construct his specific worldview. His salvation history stretches from the creation to the present time of his readers, in three ages, first, the time of the Law and the Prophets. Luke chapter 16 verse 16, the period beginning with Genesis and ending with the appearance of John the Baptist Luke chapter 1 verse 5 minus 3 2 1, second, the epic of Jesus, in which the kingdom of God was preached Luke chapter 3 verse 2 minus 24 to 51, and finally the period of the church, which began when the risen Christ was taken into heaven, and would end with his second coming, Luke acts as an attempt 
attempt to answer a theological problem, namely how the Messiah promised to the Jews came to have an overwhelmingly non-Jewish church, the answer it provides, and its central theme, is that the message of Christ was sent to the Gentiles because the Jews rejected it. This theme is introduced at the opening of the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus, rejected in Nazareth, recalls that the prophets were rejected by Israel and accepted by Gentiles. At the end of the Gospel he commands his disciples to preach his message to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, he repeats the command in Acts, telling them to preach. In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. They then proceed to do so, in the order outlined, first Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, then the entire Roman world. For Luke, the Holy Spirit is the driving force behind the spread of the Christian message, and he places more emphasis on it than do any of the other evangelists. The Spirit is poured out. At Pentecost, on the first Samaritan and Gentile believers, and on disciples who had been baptized only by John the Baptist, each time as a sign of God's approval. The Holy Spirit represents God's power. At his ascension, Jesus tells his followers, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Through it the disciples are given speech to convert thousands in Jerusalem, forming the first church the term is used for the first time in Acts 5. One issue debated by scholars is Luke's political vision regarding the relationship between the early church and the Roman Empire. On the one hand, Luke generally does not portray this interaction as one of direct conflict. Rather, there are ways in which each may have considered having a relationship with the other rather advantageous to its own cause. For example, early Christians may have appreciated hearing about the protection Paul received from Roman officials against Gentile rioters in Philippi Acts chapter 16 verses 16 to 40 and Ephesus Acts chapter 19 verses 23 to 41, and against Jewish rioters on two occasions Acts chapter 17 verses 1 to 17, Acts chapter 18 verses 12 to 17. Meanwhile, Roman readers may have approved of Paul's censure of the illegal practice of magic Acts chapter 19 verses 17 to 19 as well as the amicability of his rapport with Roman officials such as Sergius Paulus Acts chapter 13 verses 6 to 12 and Festus Acts chapter 26 verses 30 to 32. Furthermore, Acts does not include any account of a struggle between Christians and the Roman government as a result of the latter's imperial cult. Thus Paul is depicted as a moderating presence between the Church and the Roman Empire. On the other hand, events such as the imprisonment of Paul at the hands of the Empire Acts 22 as well as several encounters that reflect negatively on Roman officials for instance, Felix's desire for a bribe from Paul in Acts chapter 24 verse 26 function as concrete points of conflict between Rome and the early Church. Perhaps the most significant point of tension between Roman imperial ideology and Luke's political vision is reflected in Peter's speech to the Roman centurion, Cornelius Acts chapter 10 verse 36. Peter states that, This one, Hutos i.e., Jesus, is Lord, Kyrios of all. The title, Kyrios was often ascribed to the Roman emperor in antiquity, rendering its use by Luke as an appellation for Jesus an unsubtle challenge to the emperor's authority. Topic. Comparison with other writings Topic. Gospel of Luke As the second part of the two-part work Luke Acts, Acts has significant links to the Gospel of Luke. 
Major turning points in the structure of Acts, for example, find parallels in Luke. The presentation of the child Jesus in the temple parallels the opening of Acts in the temple. Jesus's 40 days of testing in the wilderness prior to his mission parallel the 40 days prior to his ascension in Acts. The mission of Jesus in Samaria and the Decapolis, the lands of the Samaritans and Gentiles, parallels the missions of the apostles in Samaria and the Gentiles lands, and so on see Gospel of Luke. These parallels continue through both books. There are also differences between Luke and Acts, amounting at times to outright contradiction. For example, the Gospel seems to place the Ascension on Easter Sunday, immediately after the Resurrection, while Acts 1 puts it 40 days later. There are similar conflicts over the theology. While not seriously questioning the single authorship of Luke Acts, these differences do suggest the need for caution in seeking too much consistency in books written in essence as popular literature. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Pauline Epistles. Acts agrees with Paul's letters on the major outline of Paul's career, he is converted and becomes a Christian missionary and apostle, establishing new churches in Asia Minor and the Aegean and struggling to free Gentile Christians from the Jewish law. There are also agreements on many incidents, such as Paul's escape from Damascus, where he is lowered down the walls in a basket. But details of these same incidents are frequently contradictory, for example, according to Paul it was a pagan king who was trying to arrest him in Damascus, but according to Luke it was the Jews 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 33 and Acts chapter 9 verse 24. Acts speaks of Christians and disciples. But Paul never uses either term, and it is striking that Acts never brings Paul into conflict with the Jerusalem church and places Paul under the authority of the Jerusalem church and its leaders, especially James and Peter Acts 15 verses Galatians chapter 2. Acts omits much from the letters, notably Paul's problems with his congregations internal difficulties are said to be the fault of the Jews instead, and his apparent final rejection by the church leaders in Jerusalem Acts has Paul and Barnabas deliver an offering that is accepted, a trip that has no mention in the letters. There are also major differences between Acts and Paul on Christology the understanding of Christ's nature, eschatology understanding of the last things, and apostleship. See also Acts of the Apostles genre Les Acts des Apostles List of Gospels List of omitted Bible verses The lost chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, also known as the Sunini Manuscript Textual variants in the Acts of the Apostles Holy Spirit in the Acts of the Apostles <laughs>